So, here's what I've been doing for the past month. I've been cartooning people from life. I've been creating characters, designing things, looking at photos and turning them into cartoons. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I was thinking, I want to make a video where I'll share five tips that's helping me to create characters with personality in life. So yeah, that's what this video is all about. Also, stick with the video till the end because I have a little challenge for us to do to apply all these tips and with an iPad Air and an Apple Pencil. Turn up the heat on these videos, folks. So let's start. These are five tips that I keep in mind myself when I'm doing these things. And these are a mixture of mindset and practical based tips. So with that said, here's the first step. Don't do it for others. Do it for yourself. What does that mean? That basically means draw what you're interested in. Why do I say that? If you draw something that you're really interested in, you tend to put in a lot more effort than you usually do because you really care about exploring the thing that you want to draw. And when you put more effort, the result will show for itself. The outcome will be much better. And the passion that you have for the thing that you're trying to draw will show. But on the other hand, I have done this a lot in the past before, and I still need to remind myself of this from time to time. If you draw something or create something to please other people, the result is just subpar. It's not just there. You gotta choose what you're interested in. You gotta choose something like a reference image or some sort of a character. Pick a subject that you really have a vested interest in. You want to explore that. You want to draw that. You wanna feel that feeling that you have when you eat a piece of chocolate. Yeah, you want to have that feeling when you're choosing the thing that you want to draw. Example, I was in the trap of trying to draw things to please other people on my Instagram and all that stuff, right, for a while. And I was like, this time, I want to choose something that I genuinely care about, something I genuinely am interested in drawing. And I chose this image of this little boy in a cool pose, which I really liked. And I was thinking, eh, no, no, but nobody would like it. Huh? Why would anyone like it, right? So I was like slowly, calmly, with patience, exploring all the details of it. I was trying to study it. I was trying to understand the forms, the colors, the light and the shadow. And I was doing all these things and I posted it and all of a sudden, boom, that post just went against the Instagram algorithm and my post started getting 10,000 plus likes again. I was like, whoa, wait a second, what the heck just happened? It is because people find or sense that passion that you have when you're trying to do something that you like. It's just weird. See, that's the power of passion. It goes against the algorithms. <laughs> now, here's the second tip, which is draw like a kid. So as you go through this art journey, where you're trying to learn new things, get better at art and all that stuff, you kind of get lost in the technicalities of things. You're like, man, I gotta focus on this, I gotta focus on that, I gotta learn this technique, that technique, blah, 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 blah. blah. No, you gotta know why you started this thing in the first place, which is, I wanna draw like a kid. Draw like a kid, what does that even mean? Draw without expectations. Draw without the expectation of wanting to have some sort of result, because that's what a kid does. A kid draws without expectation because the kid likes the process. He likes doing that thing. And this is a thing that I always have told myself for like a very long time. I've, I'm like, man, Keisha, forget the technical details. Forms, perspective, light and shadow, this, that, line work, well, woo, no. Simple. Draw that thing. Just draw it. Just have fun. If it's a bad drawing, good. No, fine. Don't give it up. Just draw that. And ever since I started doing that, it's just, just a little bit more freeing. You know, it's like, huh, phew, yeah, just like that. So that is sort of like on one end of the spectrum. Now, I want to balance that thing with the other end of the spectrum for people who want to really master the craft as well while drawing like a kid. Got to balance it like a seesaw. And this tip right here, the third one, is what I think the most advanced of the advanced artists really do. The truly advanced, the super talented folks. And this is the tip, the secret, by the way, it is this. Do the fundamentals really well. See, most of us, including myself, I used to think this, which is being advanced means going beyond the basics, going beyond the fundamentals. You do an advanced stuff. No, because I've come to learn that advanced artists are not beyond the fundamentals, but rather they do the fundamentals really freaking well. Being advanced equals doing the basics. That's what being advanced is. I sort of got that tip from this entrepreneur guy named Alex Hormozzi and I was like, man, ever since I heard that, that guy's like a hundred million dollar entrepreneur. He's like, man, what does it take to be a high level entrepreneur? And he was like, do the basics. 
do the basics really well. It's like, hmm, that sort of applies to art. You gotta ask yourself all these questions, which I did. Do I know how to use forms well in perspective? Because that is what one uses to draw characters in different angles. Do I have good quality line work? Can I make it better? Can I draw high quality gestures of a particular character? Can I make them flow well? Have I observed the difference between light and shadow really well? Can I capture that essence into my art? And then have I practiced all these things, these individual mini skills at least a hundred times? So I was asking myself all these things and I was like, man, Keisha, buddy, you shouldn't be doing the fancy things. I've been drawn for 20 years almost right now. It's like, dude, this is a time for you to double down on the basics. And that's what I've been doing. Stop doing the fancy things and start doubling down on the basics. Simple things like getting your sketch right working on the forms well, being patient while you're doing the line work, just taking five freaking more minutes while looking at the work and to see where the light is and where the shadow is. It's like so, so bloody simple, but, but I, I, I didn't do that. Now I'm doing it and it's like, ah, it's fun again. And that's where my next point sort of bleeds to. You gotta do more deliberate daily practice. So I've committed myself as part of my art journey and my want to improve my craft to this particular thing, which is, 20 minutes of daily deliberate practice every single weekday actually for the next 10 years. That is that is my commitment right there and I've been doing that thing. And it's boring practice, not fancy work. I'm not doing all these illustration work unless that is the intention of that practice. What I'm doing is boring, mundane things like drawing boxes, sketching a character and getting it right, making sure the perspective is right and yeah, boring stuff, it's boring because boring things done right for a long enough period of time yields faster results than the fancy work. And every single time I finish my practice, I ask myself a couple of questions to make myself better for the next practice, which is this. What are the three things that I like about this drawing? What are the three things that I can improve on in the next drawing? What are the things that I did not like in this drawing that I don't want to repeat in the next one? So like I take these answers and apply to the next one. I get 1% better and that's what I'm doing. It's like so bloody small, but I'm thinking, man, if, you, if, you, if I do this for the next 10 years, how deadly that would be. Doing feedback, repeat, and that's what I do. And that is a process that I'm using for getting better at cartooning people, which sort of now leads to my next point, which is pick one thing to get good at and just get good at that thing. Told you that my daily practice, right? 20 minutes a day for the next 10 years. So I have a theme each month that I'm trying to sort of work on. And I have an overarching life theme that I have, which is this, I wanna get good at cartooning characters. That is my big, larger goal. I wanna get better, like way better. And there are many, many sub skills which I need to learn. I need to learn to draw better faces, better expressions, better designs, better storytelling. These are all many, many skills. And I take one of these things, which is like a theme for the month that I have, and then I work on it. The theme for this month is cartooning people from photographs or life from photos this is what I'm doing right now. I apply all these things, all these sets of principles, questions, and I just get better each and every single time I sit down for practice. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and 20 minutes. But the thing that is helping me most is this, dropping all my wants in terms of wanting to do all kinds of other art and just focusing on one kind of art, sort of just nailing down this one zone, cartooning, cartooning people, cartooning characters, because I have an inclination towards that. I really like doing that thing. And when I started to zone in like that, all the other distractions sort of started to drop because apparently there is a fallacy that we have, which is like, if you want to get good at art, you got to draw everything right. You got to do everything right. You got to learn everything right. That's not the case. Oftentimes, most artists are really good at one thing, but they terribly suck at pretty much everything else. And I chose this to be my one thing, cartooning, character design. I'm getting better at it. I've been subconsciously choosing it for the past couple of years, but right now I've chosen it a lot. And that's really helping me. If you're watching this video, choose your one thing. You don't have to choose something without having tried other things. Try everything and see what works for you and choose a thing choose something. Now the initial sacrifice will be hard, but make it because trust me, chase true rabbits, you'll catch neither one.
it's like I've learned that lesson so many times it's it's not even helpful so those are like five mindset based things that I'm sort of keeping in mind when I'm cartooning people these are the biggest things now you might be asking me buddy Keisha you haven't shown me the technique of cartooning people how dare you you bloody bugger right but I feel like the things which I just said is one of the most important things that you should probably take away. You can take away that will help you more than the technique because a person who focuses on principles is better than a person who focuses on methods because principles beats methods all the time. So here's a challenge for you. Can you take all the techniques in this video, apply it for the next four days and create one cartoon each day and send it to me and I'll pick one person and give them an iPad Air and Apple Pencil. And I'm doing this because I want you to take action because what's the point of you watching this video if you don't take action? I'm going to be hosting a quick challenge, a cartooning people challenge. Here's what you have to do. Draw four cartoon faces from real life or photographs digitally or traditionally by applying the tips in this video. Here's how you start. Go to the link down below and sign up for the challenge by entering your details. It's free by the way. You'll receive an email with further instructions about the challenge and I'll send you three one minute cartooning faces tutorial that will help you in this challenge. Apply the principles in that video and send us a collage of your four cartoons just like this and submit it via the link provided in the email that you're getting. It'll be like a big submit button. The last date for submission is November 30th, 6 p.m. IST. And after November 30th, I'll pick one winner and send them an iPad Air and an Apple Pencil because I'm on a goal to give 100 iPad Airs and Apple Pencils away. I've given five away. Now, this is one more to that list. So 94 to go. So yeah, it's a fantastic tool, by the way. It's very good for artists. Now, don't worry about making the perfect drawing. Don't worry about the other people who are participating. It does not matter, right? Just do something. Do it for yourself. Make something. And if it's bad, it's fine, but you made something. And that's the first step to getting better. And I wish this opportunity helps you to do that.